Hi there, so today I wanted to talk about working with proxy footage in Final Cut Pro 10. Now this is a really great way of reducing the amount of disk space you take up when you're rendering out your edit as you're working on it, and also um, of speeding up your edit. If you're working on a laptop like myself for a lot of your editing, then this will really make the, the editing process a lot quicker as you're moving things around, as you're adding new transitions, adding effects. Working with proxy footage will improve the speed of all of that. Um, and as I said, it will also reduce the amount of disk space that you use up. So when we work with proxy footage, Final Cut Pro renders out a proxy version of that in the Apple ProRes 422 proxy format, which basically provides an offline version of your file. So you do need to change this when you render out your final video, but it keeps the same size, the same frame rate of your original footage. So you can edit really easily in Final Cut and then pull it back as you come to export things. So let's have a look at how we set up the proxy workflow. So we're going to edit a clip down to the timeline. We'll just grab the whole clip, drag and drop it onto our timeline and then we'll just use shift and z to uh, bring it back and essentially uh, this clip at the moment is not in proxy format and the way that we know that is if we come up to our viewer here in the center of final cut pro and just click on this little arrow at the top right we can see we can select the viewer display options okay and we're working with the optimizer original format format of the footage so in order to switch to working in proxy footage we, this is where we need to to make the first switch, okay? Now, as soon as you do that, Final Cut is now telling us that we don't have a proxy version of that footage rendered out, okay? So what I would suggest is that before you work on a big edit, that you do the transcoding of your footage to proxy format uh, the night before or something like that. So set things going overnight, um, your footage will transcode pretty quickly, and then you can work on it. So we can see, we can see the warning here and also in our other uh, clips here. Okay, now this is the setting that you'd need to flip back when you're rendering out as well. So make sure that before you render out your final edit, that you switch back to the optimized or original footage. Now, you can switch between these two as well. Uh, final Cut will keep the, the rendering that it's done, um, as long as you don't delete that, um, in both the optimized and the proxy format. So you can switch between both um, if you have the disk space to do it, um, or if you've rendered out some effects and you don't want to re-render them because it's going to take a lot of time, then you can keep the optimized rendering that you've done as well as switching to the proxy format to speed up the editing process. Okay, so let's now look at how we transcode this footage. Now there's three places that we can do this. The first is from the file menu, so we can go to File and Transcode Media, okay? And we're just transcoding the, the clip that we've selected here. And you can see in our background task here now, we have the transcoding and analysis happening for that clip. So as soon as that's transcoded, you can see it's analyzing and transcoding uh, this clip, then it will show up in the timeline here as well. Okay, so that is a short 25 second clip. Um, and you can see it didn't take too, too long to transcode it. Now it will be easier when I'm scrubbing in the timeline to move around that footage with my laptop. And it will also be easier to kind of add effects or transitions as I'm flowing through my edit rather than with the original optimized footage, which would take a little bit longer to render, okay? So playback is gonna be much better with proxy footage. So let's have a look at the other ways we can transcode our footage. So if we grab another clip here, we can right click and go to transcode media here. So the contextual menu with control and click or right click allows us to create proxy media too. So we can click okay there. And then also if we select a clip and come to the clip information here. So I'm in the inspector here on the right hand side. You can see I've got the video options, the audio options, and then the info. And here I can generate the proxy footage as well. So I can click here and that will begin the generation of the proxy footage. Okay, so those are the three ways of generating the, the proxy footage. And now once we've done that, moving around the timeline will be much quicker. And also, as I said, um, adding any effects will be quicker too. So generally, I tend to work with proxy footage if I'm working on a, a longer edit, so something that's over you know, a few minutes long, I'll work with proxy footage just because I know it's gonna be a lot quicker to actually work and flow around my edit, make quick changes than it will be with working with the original optimized media. But it really depends on your system. Um, as I said, working on a laptop, this will help a lot in improving the flow of working with your footage. Okay, if you have any questions about Final Cut, then don't hesitate to send me a tweet at Ben Housel, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.